You're joining us on Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Palm Springs at the California State Association of Counties Convention. We're joined today by Chuck Wynn. He is a supervisor in San Joaquin County. And while there's a lot of attention about the homeless crisis in Los Angeles County and San Diego County, what we know is that California is facing a homeless crisis. We have 12% of the population nationwide, but 21% of the homeless. And so even in San Joaquin County, you are faced with a homeless crisis. Absolutely. Talk to us about it. Give us a sense of what it is and how you became involved in this issue. Well, thanks for having me, Brad. Of I, I would uh, start with, with my experience last year as a, a new supervisor, mm. attending two committees that dealt with homelessness in my district. And you had been a mayor of Ripon, which is a town in your district. Right. I was uh, on mm. city council mayor for 12 right. years. And, and, the, and what came to me in, in these meetings is that there was a discussion about how all these service providers, there wasn't necessarily any coordination. Mm. They were doing great things, but, but there was no collaboration, so to speak, to really address whether there's overlaps or there was a lack of service. And I have to say, sadly, I've heard that from supervisors and council members up and down the state. And at times, the finger pointing started. And so the lack of coordination has been an endemic problem. Right. Yeah, and absolutely. And what kind of spurred me on was that I went to a meeting. It was preparation for one of our, our sweeps of homeless encampments. And which brings up a whole other issue, which we'll talk about. A whole other issue. And, and, and the question arose because there are representatives from the city, there are representatives from the county, there are representatives from the state, there are representatives from the railroad, and, and private landowners, et cetera. And, and what I heard was, you know, obviously this coordination, tremendous resources being utilized to go in and sweep these 14 encampments along the river. And, and by virtue of that, what I also heard from a gentleman from the railroad is that he'd been doing this for six years. And so my question was, we've been doing this for six years, it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. Right. And, we're, and we're using tremendous amount of resources, both public and private. And so by virtue of that, and, and later talking to the sheriff and, and, and the chief of police of our largest city, I was asking them about the, the process and they were saying the same thing. They go in, they do the sweeps, within a week everything's back. So why are we spending so much time and effort and resources is on something that we're not improving. So I got together with the sheriff and, and uh, now I, I uh, chair a committee with Law and Justice, which includes the courts, includes the probation department, the uh, district attorney, the public defender, behavior health, the sheriff, the chiefs of police in all the cities. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish, because homelessness is not a crime, but, but more importantly... But let me talk to you about that sure. if I may, because that has been a challenge, is the criminalization of homelessness. Right. And I do know that many sheriffs, many DAs, many supervisors are looking at thinking about homelessness differently and not criminalizing it. The courts have been very clear. It's not a crime to be right. homeless. And even the mere act of sweep can implicate uh, certain laws that suggest that what the homeless are doing is criminal. And so you sweep all the encampment, then what do you do with their, their stuff? You can't throw it away. The court's been very right. clear on that. And so we really are facing kind of a revolution in our thinking about homelessness. Well, absolutely, Brad. I think the problem, though, is is, is it because there are homeless who don't come in contact with law enforcement. Right. There are crimes that are committed, obviously. Oh, of course. And, and for example, we, I was talking to the sheriff, they had one particular individual who'd been in their booking facility 400 times. Yeah, what's the point? And, and, the, and the question is, he's not being helped. He's certainly, you know, and maybe serving 30 days for, for whatever mm -hmm. the violation was. But more importantly, what, what this group is trying to do is, is we're trying to first equalize the enforcement across the county. So you don't have one area that, that's mm -hmm. more strict enforcement, one area there's, because you, you know they'll gravitate. And I'm glad you brought up the different areas because what's unique about this homeless crisis is in past when we've seen past spikes in homelessness, it was homeless congregating in one area, Skid Row, metaphoric Skid Row. What's different about this homeless crisis up and down the state is that the homeless are in all areas, um, nice areas. And that presents challenges because we as Californians, I mean, I know I simultaneously, I'll admit it, feel scared but empathetic when I see a homeless person kind of in an area I've never seen them before. Right. Well, I think the problem is, we, we think in terms of the Skid Row derelict, right. you know, there are homeless people are there because of economic disadvantage, right. because they lost their job, they lost their home, maybe they lost their family. 
And, and then there are those who have mental health issues, there are those who have addiction issues, and there are those who just want to be homeless. I mean, that's, that's their lifestyle. So look, there's no question there's those homeless, we call them service resistant. Right. Maybe that's 25%, 30%. But there are others that are willing to accept services in the right circumstances, where they don't feel like they're being criminalized, for example, right, right. by law enforcement. And law enforcement up and down the state is being trained on working with the homeless right. and not creating an adversarial relationship. As I'm sure you know, the state Senate took the lead this year on rejiggering Prop 63 dollars to provide funding for permanent, permanent supportive housing. Right. Um, has that money started to flow to counties? Or are we starting to see no, that? No, not yet. And, okay. and I guess the downside is, is potentially we may lose funding for our mental health programs. Oh, no. well, explain. Well, supposedly the funding, which was primarily focused for Southern California, right. but, but there is there is a potential that we may lose some of our funding that we have for treatment. And going back to, to the original program, the, the process is, is it, it, as we, as we have contact with these individuals who, who go into the criminal justice system, the courts, for example, probation, et cetera. What we want to do is we want to evaluate them and give them an opportunity, as opposed to going to jail, an opportunity for treatment. Because if we can salvage 10, 20 percent of the homeless population, do you know how much money that would save in regards to, to, the, to the resources that we spend on an annual basis? And, and more importantly, we have individuals that, that become productive in society, feel m much better about themselves. They aren't in your neighborhood or wherever right. it happens to be. So what does treatment look like, though? Is this drug treatment? Is it psychological treatment? What type of treatment do we need? We need all we, of the we, above. All the, we need right. all the above. But more importantly, and here's the key, Brad, is that even with treatment, another problem is that oftentimes what happens is, is a person is is restored. Uh, they're back on track. Maybe they're they're got a job, et cetera. And we are looking, by the way, just to just to expand. We are working on a program by virtue of of taking the homeless and getting them into the workforce. Right. Because a job and a place to stay is obviously important. The sheriff, because we're we're going to be building a new medium security jail, we're going to abandon our honor farm. We're going to utilize that with service providers like Salvation Army, Rescue Mission, you know, individuals, organizations like that. We're going to open that up. We're provide that as temporary shelter. Mm -hmm. Plus, it will also be an opportunity because we're, we're within a mile of our county hospital to provide medical care, treatment, those types of things. I want to ask you about Sacramento because there have been folks that have said that we should be declaring an emergency. And if an emergency is declared, arguably more funds could flow either from Sacramento or Washington. Maybe we ta tap into the rainy day fund, which is receiving funds since our economy is approving. Right. Do you think we need to declare an emergency? And would it well, matter? Well, I, emergency is is, is such a. a, a I understand. A, yeah. A, a, well, what I would what I would offer is. Please. We will always have homeless. We've had them in the past. We'll continue to have them for a variety of reasons. I think the the more we focus, and I believe the community is is behind rehabilitation and restoring these individuals to society, and the more we can do both in the private sector and the public sector to accomplish that, the better off we are. But even though we'll always have homeless, you said it. I mean, these numbers or numbers we've never seen before. And so, you know, I just go back, do we need some type of formal statement that this is an emergency, this is a crisis, or is that just semantics? No, I, it, it is a crisis. It is a crisis because you see the, the individuals who, who are desperate, in right. for lack of a better term. and and. The problem is, is that I would say yes, we could augment it with additional right. funding because we don't have the number of, of uh -huh. bed space, we don't have the number of professionals for treatment, we don't have the opportunity because right. if, even if they're, I want to use the term yeah. cured, but, but as they're restored, more importantly is if there isn't follow-up, if you don't follow up on people who's right. taking their medicine, then, then they obviously go back to that. He is now. Chuck Wynn from San Joaquin County. I'm Brad Pomeranz, Charter Local Edition.